magnify you Lord we lift you up Jesus oh great God heavenly father eternal God Lord we come before you another day oh great God we are about to hear from you Lord I pray dear God that as your servant come oh great God that you'll anoint him afresh oh great God give him fresh vision oh great God I pray dear God that you'll pour out into his soul anew oh great God as he come Oh, great God, we pray for strength again. Touch your servant now as we tell you thanks. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Today it is my privilege to introduce to you a humble servant of God. A man who have the gospel as a passion. He's very passionate about his ministry. And so today he have agreed to come and to minister to us today. Please make welcome no other than Bishop Eric Stedman in care of the Holy Ghost. Can you lift your voice and give him praise? Come on everywhere, lift your voice and give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Come on, give him praise and glory. Before I ask you, before I ask you to praise him again, let me quote from scripture. The Bible says that John was in the Isle of Patmos and he was caught up to heaven and he heard the angels, seraphims and cherubims and archangels the 420 elders and the four beasts as they worship and glorify God. When John heard them, he said, listen, I got to do something. Then he said, let everything in heaven and on the earth hear me saying glory and honor and praise and dominion and riches and honor. In other words, John would not allow just the angels to praise God. He wanted everyone to hear him praising God. And I want you who have been redeemed, washed in the blood of the Lamb, let this area hear you and those on the social media, let them hear you praising God. Oh, glory. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Mighty God. My God, I praise you, I praise you. I praise you while I have my being. I praise my God in the house. I praise among the saints. I praise among the righteous. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Come on, let everything that I breath, 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 come on, lift up our praise, lift up our praise, lift up our praise, lift up our praise, woo, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, glory to God, woo, glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory. My God, I give a praise. I give a praise. I give a praise. And glory. And worship. And honor. And majesty. And power. For God, you're worthy to receive praise. And glory. From the rise of the sun to the going down. Are the same. I praise you in the morning. I praise you at noon. I praise you at night. I praise you on the mountain. I praise you in the valley. I praise you on the job. Wherever I go, I will praise him. Now lift up your voice and give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. My God, my God, my God, I come to praise him. I come to praise him. Come on, touch your neighbors and let neighbor. I come and praise this for the king. Come on, tell someone, I, I come and business for the king. Woo, God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. You might be seated. Let me just show you 
the power of hallelujah. We were asked to shout hallelujah twice. Some said it twice. In Africa, a few years ago, an international evangelist, Reinhard Bonke, had a tremendous revival. Souls were getting saved. And three witches came to the campaign to kill the preacher. They all came in agreement. Talk about the power of agreement. And likewise, when we come together as one, if we come in agreement touching anything concerning God, mixed with faith and the word of God, you can become dangerous. When they called the man of God to the podium to speak, the three witches got up and they held their hands together because that was the plan. But when they held hands together as a holy microphone, he should die. But before he touched the microphone, he shouted three times, Hallelujah! 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 And God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, not the three riches flat on their backs. They almost died. He had to pray for them. You don't know the strength and the power, the effectiveness of your hallelujah. Hallelujah is used in any language. If you're in Spanish, it is the same thing, hallelujah. If you go to heaven, you'll find the word hallelujah. Why shouldn't we use hallelujah? It's a God-given word. It is covered with the blood and brings deliverance. And we're going to see what God's going to do and say today. Let me take this opportunity to greet Pastor Morgan. Amen, Elder Morgan. Our moderator, all the ministers, officers, workers, children, online viewers, I bring you all greetings in the mighty and holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To my good friend, Sister Anna, at the back there. Amen. I eat at a restaurant regularly. Amen. Praise God. And I thank God. Sister Brooksy, praise God. I'm missing somebody from the crusade. Amen. But that's how I think some people are not feeling so strong, maybe. As a matter of fact, she wasn't well the other night. Um, she, I think Sister Peter. Right. Amen. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember some of the faces in the night. Some of you look different in the day. But that's how it works. Amen. Amen. But I'm so glad to be here today in the house of the Lord. Um, up to next week, Sunday, I had no idea where I would be. I had no idea I would be here today. But the will of God be established. And the purpose of God come to pass. Amen. Amen. And I thank Pastor for the invitation to be here. God bless you, sir. Amen. And uh, that song that um, the young lady sang a while ago, she was the first one who saw me today and greeted me. Um, young Sister Peter, I think it was in Sister Morgan, I think. God bless you. Wonderful singing. You see, I'm remembering some things. Yes, man, it's good. Sister Hanson, God bless you. You see what I mean? <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. Yes. I said, God is I don't hear you. All right, let me see the hand of those God have never done anything for you. Let me see your hand. All right, if God have done something for you, what should you say? When somebody gives you something, what do you say? When was the last time you thanked him for something? Let me hear you. Come on, tell him thanks. 
אלי מה כן? Glory. Amen. He loves that. He loves when you give him food. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at the time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. <coughs> Sorry, true word, man. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Now the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I call not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I. For thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not. My son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down, in his place hallelujah and the lord came and stood or oh, the note that verse 10 other times they called but he didn't stand and the lord came and stood and called three things happened right there in that verse the lord came he stood and he called is that a message for somebody today? And call us at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I give a praise and glory and honor. I thank you, God, for who you are today. God of all might and power and miracle. Who then can be likened unto the Lord our God? Who can be compared to his holiness? Lord, you have been of old. And Lord, who then can stand in your presence? You're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. The eternal God. Lord, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresence. We bow before you today. And Lord, as we come to embark on your word, we pray, Lord, for revelation, interpretation, depth. We pray, God, your word will come alive. And the faith of God will do a new thing in our heart today. I pray, divine God, I challenge every soul. Oh God, under the listening of my voice, Holy Spirit of God, as you raise Christ from the dead, we pray, God, you quicken every soul even now. We bow before you. We praise you. We exalt your mighty God, realizing not by power nor by might, but by your spirit. Your will be done even now. I will say yes to the will of God. In Jesus' mighty name and everybody, say amen. Can you say amen again? Yeah. God bless you. Might be seated. 
I want to use verse 3 as my key text. And here the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And I want to use this theme or topic to you today. The lamp of God went out but God. The lamp of God went out but God. The Bible tells us that there was a time or a point in the life of Israel when some negative things were allowed to happen. There are some things that don't just happen. There are cause or reason why things happen. Sometimes out of neglect, lack of concern, lack of vision, lack of commitment, lack of determination, lack of strength, or can be a broken relationship with God. You got to determine what place or position that you have with God at this point. Am I talking truth? The Bible tells us that there was a man called Eli who was raised up by God to stand before God as a priest. For a while he did that which was right and pleasing to God. It is good to start good, but we must also finish well. He started out with a purpose, with fire in his gut, fire in his spirit. But along the way, things begin to drift. And the Bible tells us that he had two sons who became wayward, who caused the house of God to go down. As a result, the worship and the praise that belonged to God began to suffer. Never allow the presence of God to leave you. If the presence of God leaves you, walk away from you, then I'm afraid I can't walk with you either. If God can't walk with you, then I can't walk with you. If God lift his Holy Spirit from you, and don't believe that God cannot lift his Holy Spirit, for we have seen it time and time again in the scripture, where Samson shook himself at other times, but he wished not that the Spirit of God had departed from him. So you can be still religious, going through the motion, but God is not there. The power departed. We can praise God, but it's empty. Praise God, but powerless. Hallelujah. And the first king of Israel, who had the presence of God, even speaking tongues and prophesied, that God lifted his Holy Spirit. David was on the verge of losing the Holy Spirit. So he wrote Psalm 51. Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit. Anybody today that is playing with God, playing with your anointing, playing with the presence of God, you are at the verge of losing God's presence. For God is not marked. Don't take God for granted. Don't take your salvation lightly. Don't play or mess around with God. Am I talking truth? I'm coming to you. Amen, amen. I want me to come back, but hallelujah. Sit tight. Let the church be the church. Amen. So the Bible says that Eli had two sons. And they did some things. They even sleep with women in the temple of God. And they, they behave um, unseemly in the worship. That God eventually called the two sons of the priests, sons of Belial, sons of devils. God was not pleased. 
So God was about to orchestrate something to transform the church into what he wanted to be. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will do what? I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And even now, God is still building his church. No matter what the devil does, he will never be able to mess up the plan of God. He will try everything possible. Hallelujah. But God does still have the upper hand. The church is so powerful that not even the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. The counsel and the planning of hell will never prevail. The devil use two persons within the church to bring down the church. But God who is from everlasting to everlasting. God who is omniscient. He knows all things. God is never taken by surprise. God always have a plan. Hallelujah. When God saw the church was going down. The ark of the covenant was cast aside in Shiloh. The priest, nor the pastors, nor any of the religious leaders did not seek after God. The Bible says the word of God was precious in those days. Now for a nation that God chose for himself, that God called his firstborn. For a church like that to turn its back on God is a serious indictment. And they will suffer eventually. So, if, no, Bible says in Leviticus that the lamp of God must never go out. It must burn perpetually. In the scripture lesson this morning, in Matthew chapter 5, he said, let your light the Bible tells us in 1st John that God is light and in him there is no darkness is that Bible God commanded his saints to be light in a dark world and so it is important that the church recognizes your rule in God. Your position in a dark world. A world without God. A world where all kind of devils let loose. And people turn away from God. And turn away from the truth. The light must still shine. Come on somebody. And I don't care what it takes. Had I followed other people, my life would have been out a long time. But I got to allow my light. So now I got to walk away from some people. To ensure that my light remains shining. Am I talking truth? So may not like the light you carry. But that don't stop you from being who God has called you. Not everyone will understand your level of anointing. Or your level of calling. Or your position in God. Hallelujah. Don't come down from that mountain where God has placed you. Am I talking truth? Hallelujah. So God demand much from every one of us. And that this church right here in Pear Tree, the light of God must never go out. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to preach. Give me a minute. Hallelujah. And the light must be here for a witness to our nations until he comes. Am I talking truth? That those God have chosen to be a particular light in this generation. And we got to make it known far and wide who God is. Can somebody praise God? Praise God. Let me read something from the same text. Again, praise God. Hallelujah. In verse 1. And what is important here? The word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. So two things happened 
in the life of the church of God which was different from all the other idol nations that surrounded them amen the word of God now any church that don't have the word and the vision of God it, it will cause a death and some people don't die rapid some people die slowly like for example the smoker dies slowly the drunkard dies slowly because that alcohol mess up his liver the smoker it mess up his lungs you don't feel it but you're dying before time we must look for red flags that affect our churches and we must find the solution maintain the standard or raise it even higher the word of God my brothers and sisters I submit to you that we are losing the word of God more than anything else in this world today the word of God has been watered down the message broken down to a lowly standard but thank God there are men and women who are called of God to stand their ground no matter what may come your way the word of God must have preeminence word of God is alive word of God is powerful word of God is creative he spoke and it was done he commanded and he stood fast come on somebody thy word have I hid in my heart Jeremiah said your word is like a hammer that break the rock in pieces Paul said, Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a twisted sword. Paul said to the Corinthian, Amen, the Ephesian brethren, Amen, the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. Come on, somebody. You got to learn to use the Word. So the church did not have the anointing, it lost the anointing, it lost the power it lost the cutting edge it lost the advantage it lost the vision it lost the connection with almighty god hallelujah and when the child of god have lost that connection you become vulnerable you can be attacked and defeated hallelujah but god said draw nigh unto god and god will draw nigh unto you somebody praise god Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. The word of God was precious. So I wonder what was happening to the church in the wilderness. Why the word of God was diminished. Why it was weakened. Number one, the presence of God was no longer in the church. I have been to places in Canada and in the States and in Jamaica and I've seen churches they shut up locked down they show up prayers no longer heard for the mess with the word of God listen word of God if the word of God can't help you you can't be helped the word of God will straighten you up clean you up now are you cleansed by the word of God the word of God washes it purges it sanctifies in John 17 17 sanctify them to thy truth thy word is truth you cannot know God outside of the word talk to me for the word is God John 1 and 1 in the beginning was the word. Word was with God. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Hallelujah. I have the only begotten son of God. So if you got the word, you got power. Even the Holy Ghost, he works with the word, by the word, for the word, and through the word. Jesus never stepped outside of the word. He works with the word. For he is the word. Am I talking truth? And he cannot deny his own word. Bible verse for that. 
Psalm 119 verse 89 forever O Lord thy word is settled in heaven talk to me somebody Job said I esteem the word of God more highly than my necessary food in other words let the word of God be your direction be your map be your guide Matter of fact, let me go back to St. John chapter 15, verse 7. If my word, if condition, if my word abide in you, and you abide in my word, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done. What is that saying? If I know the word, I know the will of God. If I know the will of God, I know what God wants, what God desires, and how to direct my prayer. So you can't pray without knowing the word of God. Am I talking truth? So can you can imagine a church of priests and Levites without the word of God. A word without God. A church without God. No, there's a danger. Anytime the devil find any one of us without the word, he's coming. When the Philistine understood that the ark of God was in Shiloh was not in the temple or the place of worship they mobilized let destroy the church let wipe out the church let destroy the church when the people saw the army of the Philistines they rushed to Shiloh not that their heart was turned to God but were seeking help from the God that they abandoned seeking help from the God they turned their back to and they came up with the ark of the covenant and made some empty noise when they shouted when the ark of God came in the camp the Philistine heard and said what meaneth this noise in the camp of the Hebrews somebody said their God is come down in their midst but we are not going to stop going against him quit you like men and fight and because God was not in the midst of that church that church 30,000 men lost their lives the ark of God was captured. The ark of God symbolized the presence of the most high God. He that dwelleth David later on wrote in a, in a secret place of the most high shall abide where? If you can only get under the shadow of God just a shadow you are divinely protected you are watched over no devil cannot penetrate not in the shadow of the most high God for God is purity God is holiness and God is calling for holiness to return to the house of God holiness from rush from the pew holiness from all who preach holiness from the devotion leader holiness from choir member holiness God and somebody showed holiness God will never go below his standard of holiness am I talking truth there's a verse of scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 it says keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fool for the know that they do evil let not your mouth ca cause your flesh to sin in other words keep your mouth sanctified keep your tongue under the blood Keep your position in God covered. Some places, listen, I'm looking. There are some trees, a lot of trees around here. There are some trees that grow good, 
with other trees but some trees decide i'm not sharing my space you notice some trees stand out alone and maybe god will cause somebody to stand out alone you're under the shade of too much people and you can't get your own sunlight you can't get no new trends you can't thrive you can't grow you can't make progress hallelujah hallelujah but let me lose myself and find the lord in thee hallelujah wherever god wants you to be you got to be there god would not stand still and see the church come to ruins am i talking truth eli was getting old his eyes were getting dim there must be a transition there must be a move of god hallelujah hallelujah so while eli knew that his sons were living wayward lives he did nothing to stop them he never upbraided them he never disciplined them he never rebuked them he allowed them to have listen the, in the house of god there must be order yeah. there must be discipline yeah. talk to me somebody and you can't be so brother so and so or sister so and so that you can't be disciplined yeah. hello church none of us is above the word of god there's no big man no big woman in a god church we're all called children of god amen so we got to humble ourselves and don't become like lucifer with pride in his heart for pride before destruction and the heart of the spirit listen there are some of us the first time you sin you felt guilty you felt unclean you felt as if God couldn't hear your prayer but you prayed God forgave you but you go back again and sin habitual sin now when a child of God get used to sin it becomes dangerous we have two kind of backsliders can I talk about them this is not crusade this is church service no the good backslider pastor morgan is one that knows that in sin living in the wrong so he decides let me walk out of church everybody says me a fornicator me a drunkard me a smoker me tell lie me gamble that's a good backslider but the bad backslider in tear you up mash your pastor name split up marriages God hell in the church and still I praise God walk with 10 Bible and 50 song book still I praise God hallelujah hallelujah still in position not giving it up hallelujah God have a time to clean up the church they see have a time the taking rubbish but they have a time to push out rubbish somebody praise God hallelujah God needs somebody in gospel hall to take back the lamp relight the lamp refire the lamp rekindle the lamp hallelujah you got to break ranks from Eli boys leave their company walk away from them god needs somebody to take up the challenge i ask you under god who will take up the challenge to light back the lamp so i'm going to fight you if i try to light back the lamp and I say, then who you think you'll be you're not a pastor you never get saved here, so where you come from? How many how you have so much power? Like the question, Jesus. By what authority you do these things? He said, ask you one question before I answer your one. The baptism of John was it of God or of men? They say we can't answer you. They said, neither do I answer you. My brothers and sisters, see what is speaking.
the light in our churches has grown dim the power is not operating oh yes we have the holy ghost but where are the gifts i said to her, one of the biggest church in jamaica was preaching by power of faith in portmore bishop delford davis and i say until i finish preach i don't want to hear nobody talking tongues even pastor davis just amazed i said listen i've heard in 46 years holy pa tongues but where is the gift of miracle the gift of healing the gift of faith talk to me the man the gift of discernment listen as long as i'm preaching behind this pulpit i, I don't want to hear no empty tongues you gotta talk from tongue from now till service done if you're going speaking tongues let me see your gift for if you have the holy ghost you must carry a gift you must have power and you cannot light the lamp without the power of god am i talking truth when you receive the holy ghost you got what power Acts 1 verse 8 but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem in Judea in Samaria and the uttermost part of the world am I talking truth when the Holy Ghost come it could be fire talk to me somebody Acts chapter 2 they're all together in one place and suddenly they came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and they filled all the place where they were sitting and cloven tongues like other fire sat upon them and they began to speak in other tongues as the spirit of God gave them utterance somebody praise God come on praise God come on praise him holy ghost on fire the church started out on fire when God wants to bring liberation to people in bondage for 430 years God show himself as fire Moses 80 years old backside of the desert God saw Moses and God said I must get Moses attention so God turned himself for Hebrews tells us that God is a consuming fire am I talking Bible <laughs> hallelujah when Moses saw the fire he said let me now turn aside to see this great sight when he turned God saw that he turned and if God sees some of us turn today you'll see the fire you can be refired, rekindled, relit, re-energized by divine power from on high. Somebody praise God. You cannot have the Holy Ghost without power. God showed up to Moses as fire and fire carries light. Let me continue and show you. Israel coming from Egypt. And God wants to guide their path. God became a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of the fire gave light. So all the church had light, but the enemies had darkness. So God said in 1 John 1 7, walk in the light as Christ is the light and have fellowship one with another Amen. oh glory so light is important to god am i talking truth yes. how is your light today how is your light what degree or percentage is your light how bright is it shining how effective is it how many have seen and how many can see your light and whom is your light shining is the light bright enough in your home at the workplace among your classmates and the taxis how 
how is your light? God Almighty. We need some light, some extra light. And sometimes we have to change the bulb. And sometimes in the very car, you have to change the car headlight. Because it's not penetrating far out enough to see some patchwork and some cows lying in the road. So the light is important. So God needs somebody today to get back to the place of being a well lit child of God. So the Bible says, the light went out. Now that could be judgment. So what that tells you? That they became a day of barrenness. A day of emptiness in the house of God. But God was up to something. Oh glory to God. Amen. God decided to bypass the older men. And he found a young boy. God is sovereign. God can make choices and we can't ask God no question. God can use the foolish things to confound the wise. For the ways of God are past finding out. Am I talking truth? So God decided to call a little boy just 12 years old who have not yet known God but this child was special the mother got Samuel in answer to prayer and suffering. this child was given back to God and I want to submit to you today that not every Christian is in the hand of God we wear the label we go through the motions we know how to praise the Lord oh yes we know to say amen and hallelujah we have a church word uh, uh, sound that we carry but is there is God in the sound God called Samuel he never understood the voice of God never knew the voice of God yet and I want to say to us today that every Christian must know the voice of God my sheep know my voice and another voice they will not follow there are three voices in the world three voices the voice of God your voice and the devil's voice how do you know when God is talking to you it depends on your relationship Depends on your walk with God. No. The voice of God will never tell you to step outside of the word. Never. So any voice you hear that tells you to do something contrary to this is not God. When God talks to you, there's a fire and a faith that builds up in you. When God speaks, you can even walk on water. For example, Peter and the disciples saw Jesus walking on the water. And they thought they had seen a ghost. And they cried out. But Jesus said, be not afraid. It is I. Peter said, if it be thou Lord, bid me come. What did Peter hear? The voice of Jesus. The voice of God. What Peter did next, no other man have ever done, is step out and walked on water. When God speaks, it gives you confidence, assurance. You can climb mountains, you can cross rivers. Hallelujah. For the voice of God, it stirs up your feet. It builds up yourself in God. When the devil speaks though, it brings uncertainty. I am not sure. Me not certain. Me feel afraid. Me, 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 me not want. The devil speaks like that. But the next question though, how well, how well do you know you? How well do you know you? You can marry for 50 years and I'll know your husband and know you're good yet. 
And your wife don't know you're good yet because you don't discover who you are yet. Let me give you another Bible reference. I like to saturate my message with Bible scripture. Jesus and his disciples wanted to go through Jamaica, um, Samaria. But the people would not let them, not the woman with the, with the at, at cycle, well, not this time. He wanted to go through Samaria, but the people of Samaria said, no, 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 pass. Jesus' disciples came to them and said, Lord, let us call down fire from heaven like Elijah and kill them. Hear what Jesus said. You don't even know of what spirit you're of. He's one disciples. Your spirit won't kill people when I come to seek and to save. Now, for the Christian whose mind go up and down, you don't know what you want, where you want to go. It, 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 you have to have a foundation. You got to, the Bible says, let this mind be in you. Which is also in Christ Jesus. How can I build up my mind, pastor? Let's go to Philippians. It says, whatsoever things are lovely, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, if there be any virtue or any praise, think. So you build up your mind with good thoughts. Am I talking truth? You can be known by who you are, by what comes out of your mind. If the devil can get your mind, and make it become warped you can become the worst believer in this church let this mind be in you the bible uh, let me quote a verse of scripture then let me go back to romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is the reasonable service verse 2 says and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God oh glory so the mind must be touched by the Holy Spirit and these two sons of Eli their mind was damaged by the devil and so the church was going down and God wanted to bring back the church so God had to find an ulterior um, another motive another, uh, another direction so God listen, some of you sitting down there right now you don't know what God will do with your life tomorrow you don't know how God will raise you up who would have thought who would have thought that God could use a prostitute in his lineage a woman named Rahab the harlot she found faith and favor with God I want to check the book of Matthew chapter 1 Amen. The forty and two generations out of which Jesus came Rahab name is mentioned as a gentile then you had Ruth, a Moabite woman, a Gentile, who said to her mother-in-law, Entreat me not to leave thee, not to return from falling after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. Whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Talk to me, somebody. She must have seen something in Naomi to desire her, her God. Where, listen, Naomi caused the light of God to shine in her life in a strange country. What about Joseph? Sold, hated, stripped, put in pit. He never allowed the light of God to leave him. Now listen, Joseph was far from home. In Egypt among strangers, strange custom, strange dressing, strange food. But he held on to the same God. The test would come from the boss wife. Joseph, sleep with me. A young man just 17 years old. 
hormone pumping but he put his body under subjection one of the things we miss today pastor in our churches is self control hello you, you have to learn to control yourself Bible says day after day she come to Joseph sleep with me if Joseph had done that his light would have been gone out but Joseph maintained his holiness he maintained sanctification he maintained the presence of God I said to people let them thief your shoes let them steal your dress or your hat but let nobody touch your anointing I'd rather walk alone with my anointing am I talking truth steal what you want to steal from me but not touch my anointing truth to maintain the standard that God required amen God could trust him then we look at brother Job who would not allow the light of God to leave him amen he worship and praise God that him God boasts about Job you know listen can God boast about you today Cuban, pastor you don't say God boasts have you seen my servant Job that the non righteous like him in all the world Satan shall be called to put hedge around him but when God have confidence in you when God can trust you and if God can trust you he will entrust you so listen so we God can't get certain things you know God knows that in some of your car we backslide you get a new frock you stop coming at church because you don't want to dirty up God must can trust you. Then you look at Sister Esther in a strange country, away from home, have no mother, no father, only Uncle Mordecai, a little servant girl, did not know the plan of God for her life. She was a light for her uncle. And word came that the king need a new wife. You see yourself as little sister so and so overlooked underlooked not recognized not mentioned not called that love not embraced you don't know what God have in mind for you God watching you for when the time of exhortation for God to raise you up somebody praise God who would have known that God had his eyes on a little girl named Esther who stood up for God if I perish I perish but I must got a little girl amen called Mary in Palestine nobody gave her a second chance for she was lowly but God saw her and God said through your womb my son the Messiah the anointed one the prince of life the redeemer the bomb in Gilead the bring of a trouble water will come through your loins heal Mary highly favored somebody praise God maybe you're not favored right now but wait till tomorrow maybe you don't have no light or shine and I see your light but God let God light your life because if some people light up your life the same hand that light your life the same mouth that bless you but when God when God when God when God light up your life oh God Almighty God getting ready amen to raise up somebody to light up their life how can I talk without brother David amen a little shepherd boy in the backside of the desert amen nobody no recognize him brothers were soldiers in the army big men well known and renowned but God did not choose them when God wanted a king who are you today is not who they'll see tomorrow what God said to Jeremiah the plans I have for you plans to do what to prosper you plans to bless you plans to raise you up 
Hallelujah. And God needs somebody today in this church. Amen. To be the light. Whatever you do, let your light shine. Don't wait for the praise and the accolades and the applause of men to do your job. Whatever God called you to do, do it. Paul said, if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. Am I talking shoot? Hallelujah. Somebody got to stand. Listen. Three young men. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had the light of God upon them. Can you imagine? All right. Ladies who cook, hot chicken and liver, flash and burn yet? Or fish, sometimes fish. You ever figure, say, you take off the pot cover and never put on the, 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 the towel or, or the. And when it burn, you burn, sti- this, this, you cook some dumpling, man, and some other food. And, lift off, and the, the cover lift off. And that steam, when it, when it hit you, you ever iron your clothes and you're in a rush and you take out the next piece of cloth and you forget to the iron there so and you hang up brush it how that feel no man nice can you that the right thing of the king could not be altered or changed according to the laws of the Medes and the Persians and the new the fire was heated seven times hotter did they change their mind or opinion her king live forever be known unto you this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine at the point of death I'd rather die than let my light be put out I will never deny my God I turn my back on God I displease my God I know my life is nice but if I lose my life for the master's sake I find it again hallelujah maintain your light maintain your light look at someone and say maintain your light Hallelujah. I soon close. I praise God. So the Bible says, when the music, the dots, the harp, the psaltery, and every music start to play, when you look all over yonder, a kaleidoscope of colors. Amen. People of different nation and generation in Babylon, with one accord, they all bowed. But as far as you can look, there's a three young men standing up as light bearers, torch bearers, light carriers. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Not no wrong to stand out from the rest. And that's what God is calling you to stand out from the rest. Let them see the light. Somebody went on carry news. The Bible said the wound of a tail bearer is grievous. Hello, church. Confidence in an unfaithful man is like a broken tooth and foot out a joint. So anybody that carry news, be careful. Somebody run to the king for the one promotion. King Asar, three brothers from glad tidings. Oh, king! You gave them position. You gave them authority. You bless them. You give them wealth and recognition. And this is how they treat you, oh king. Some people give you things and turn and tell you to your face. And some people, if you even if you say nothing to them, they tell you the frock you have one, you better not talk. And me give you. The food where you eat and me give you. You know, a lot of people today, they are silenced because of what people give them to shut them up. 
I'd rather give you back. But you know, shut me up. The lamp of God gone out. But God is searching for somebody. God could not use Eli anymore. He could not use Hophni and Phineas anymore. He couldn't find a high priest. He couldn't find a chief priest. He couldn't find a Levite. God check. God is searching through the church even now to find somebody to exalt you to a position. There are vacancies right now in this church. But we're not up to the standard. Pastor having his heart some position. But he might look for some people right now to put you in a hit. And if he put some people in a hit, maybe in a hell. Pastor, how you put so and so in a position? And look how long me the church. Look how long me give tithes. Look how long me give offering. Look how me support you. Pastor, Bishop, whatever your name, sir, do not give anybody nothing unless God says. Amen. Never let anybody come so close to you that you can't rebuke them. Uh oh. Let me say it again. Don't allow nobody to come too close to you that you can shut a rebuke. There is a standard in Zion. When we become too friendly, the lamb goes quicker. Then take you for granted. Walk on you. I call the man and walk out on you. When you say, Sister, so and so like a lamb, who you talk? Where you not call your friend? Where you not call your favorite? Uh oh. I'm trying to preach like a pastor, not as an evangelist. Hello, church. Do not conspire that the light go out because a preacher hit your con. You cannot speak in tongues and still carry bitterness in your heart. You can't tell me you have the Holy Ghost and from three months no, you not talk to certain people. Hello, church. What a day if Master God walk in a church. Zion must be cleansed. The light of God will never return until the house of God is cleansed. Clean me up, Jesus. Clean me up. Clean me up. Clean me up, God. Clean me up. You cannot get too close to God that you can't get more clean. Paul was close to God, he go to the third heaven. But he said, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He said, I die daily. I must die to self, die to flesh, die to the old man. Romans chapter 7 says, When I want to do good, if you're not sanctified good, you will cause. I want to realize the word come on them was Jesus be. Keep me true. Keep me true. The light of God has kept many sinners. Listen, when light has shine, you will see moth flock the light. Not true? Have you ever seen a moth go to an empty light or a dark light? Have you ever seen butterfly and bees go to um, plastic flowers? Every one of us must have substance. When the light is shining, man will seek to follow the light. Am I talking truth? Listen. We are doing good, but we can do better. We can go further and higher and wider and deeper in God. 
Don't put limit on yourself and don't put limit on God. Am I talking truth? There are people today waiting for the real light to turn on. When I'm driving and I have just a regular light, but I have to reach somewhere far and I realize I can't see so well, I switch on to the beam light. High beam, halogen. Hello, church. We need some halogen light in church. There's a verse of scripture in Lamentation chapter 4. How is thy gold become dim? And brethren, if we come to that place and admit, God, I'm not in the position, I am not in the place. I am the cause why the light is gone out. All right, I, I like to use scripture. God called a man called Jonah to bring light to Nineveh. But he never wanted to do that. He decided to pay his fear to Tarshish. Along the way, God said, All right, let me intervene. And listen, I believe today as I stand here that God is about ready to intervene in somebody's life. God gave your word, and I know you not keep it. God gave your vision. God sends to somebody, and I know you not move. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time that God talked to you? When was the last time you heard the voice of God? As a believer. My sheep know my voice. John 10. When last you heard the voice of God? So God said, come here Jonah. Let me send you on an assignment. To preach the word of man. Turn away, run away from God. God intervened. God was blew on the waters. And there came, amen, wind. But the prophet was fast asleep. In the bottom of the boat. And listen, this man of God here need help. He need, I'm, I, I, listen, I appreciate your sacrifice, your time, your labor, your, your energy, and your effort in the outdoor meeting. But don't stop now. Don't give up now. Don't get weary now. Hey God, we are God want to take this church. We are not ascend the mountain yet. We are still on the hill. We are still climbing. Climbing with God. He need back up. He need some iron and some horror to take me higher. Take me higher, God. Take me higher. How much want to go higher today in God? So the man fast asleep. And all the gifts in from Sunday school choir, all the auxiliaries and all the, the workers who are involved. Amen. God looks for a hundred percent. The man with the word. The man with the light. The man with the calling. The man with the assignment. God Almighty. A carrier of a word of deliverance for a nation. Fast asleep, God Almighty. The light was not shining. But the unsaved say, hold well, on. Somebody is on board a stranger. And let me go wake him. I said, sir, who are you? Where you come from? Who is your people? And who is your God? People must know who your God is. They must know who you believe in. Because I know in whom I believe. And I'm fully persuaded that God is able. Let him see the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon your life. Who are you, sir? Who are you, ma'am? How is your calling? How is the fire? How is the joy? How is the vision? How is the faith of God on the inside? Somebody praise God today. Hallelujah. Lord, if you can use anything, you can use me. But I, I must get the light first. My brother, 
you drive good today but anyhow you go on the road tonight with no light what will happen police and transport authority and they hungry you so, and call your boy and my, when i know like that state and man hungry you yes. hello church when you have no light to shine for the devil is afraid of light in the book of acts the bible says that god of translated us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light hello church so the devil knows so you're on god's side because the light is shining upon you am i talking truth but drawing a light had gone down he was called on to testify before Anshina. he had to preach before he got to Nineveh. then he admit i'm running away from god but for the storm to end in the church you have to throw me overboard. I said, we don't want no, bro no brother blood on our hands. Sinner said, we don't want no Christian blood on our hand. He said, you want peace? Throw me overboard. And they lifted Jonah. And when they threw him overboard, God had a fish prepared. And my God, three days and night, he was in the belly of the whale. And the belly, some, God, listen, God had used GPS long time. Hello, God give the fish GPS to find the location. God are the first one, amen, that, that used a um, tablet. Yeah. It, it is a Samsung. I know Samsung used a tablet first, you know. I got first, make not, not the Bible say. Yeah. Amen, I'm Moses broke out the tablet. God, I have to make a next tablet. <laughs> God have the first remote control gate. Yeah. When Peter lock up in a jail. Open up his own accord. For you can't lock down the church. God is the way maker, miracle worker, light in the darkness. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. So when the man of God was in the wheel, got the wheel said, Hold on. No one backslider in my gut. He said, Hold on. No one may have upset stomach. I can't hold my peace. And we are switch on in GPS. Amen to Nineveh. And when he see me, I say, hello, shark, I can't stop. I'm on a mission. Me got, me got, me belly. Ah, oh, I want to give birth. I want to give birth. I want to backslide and I got. He see barracuda, I can't stop. He see blue wheel, I can't stop. He see shark, he can't stop. Talk to me. For somebody inside with a message. Somebody inside that carry the light. I can't hold my peace. Emergency. Somebody praise God. Come on, praise him. I got to get him out. I got to flush him out. Somebody praise God. For the light got to shine. Hallelujah. Woo. My sister, the way I said, no time for no pleasantry, no hello. No, praise the Lord, Sister Shark. <laughs> when he got near the seaside, he said, like, you backslider, brother. Out of me, God. <laughs> for you to carry the message, you got to get rid of some things. Out of your system. So why you sometimes need change for the flashlight to light? So they get to a um, piece of um, sandpaper and clean off the contacts, the connection. For if you have battery in a flashlight and are used for a long time, you go and corrode. God bless me with the Holy Ghost. And all you want to speak in tongues, shalom, 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 shalom. And nothing happened. God is looking for the gifts to be in operation. There must be a manifest manifestation of the power and glory of God. Dead church not attract nothing and nobody. Anything dead me afraid of it. Take me back to the light. Take me back to the light. Amen. 
For God said the days are coming when it shall shake the heavens and shake the earth as well. Am I talking truth? Amen. The light must shine. Amen. The word of God must come back. For the time, um, Timothy says, for the time will come when they will not end your sound doctrine, but have itching ears. So they don't want the truth anymore. Am I talking truth here? Yeah. Hallelujah. And when you find Christian who want truth, you don't say gone bad. Yeah. Amen. Turn your ears away from the truth, having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof from such turn away. Take me back to the power. Take me back to the anointing. I want you to resolve in your mind today by the grace of God. I must get back full hundred watt or uh, two forty watt. I want about the rap power of God in my life. Rap power from the upper room. Rap power from the Holy Ghost. Uh, untouched and modified. I want power. Somebody show power. Come on, show power. Power. Holy Ghost power. Hey, my God. Oy. If no power in the line. All right. You see the light bulb up there, sir? Cut the wire and put your finger upon it. What will happen? Why? Cut the switch and cut the wire. Can you put your, fire, your finger on it? Yes, man. For no power, no did it. If some of you trust me right now, I'm not feel nothing. Power cut long time. No people power cut long time and praise the Lord. Same way. Listen, you can speak in tongues that no one goes to the day. No? And you can jump and shout. Pastor, your Bible reference to that? Yes, man. Samson went and trim him. And the woman says, Samson the Philistine that up and the Bible said, and shook himself like other times. But they wished not that the Spirit of God had departed. You see the Holy Ghost? He's a dove. And the least mistake in your life, it can fly. But before, listen, no Christian get weak overnight. It's a gradual thing. Hmm? So if you put yourself in a position, you can lose your light. And the devil can cut your switch. Amen? Some people die slowly in the church. The testimonies start get weaker and weaker. Come to church later and later. No want to do nothing in church anymore. No want to teach on the school. No want to see on the choir. So you know, say that's a red flag right there. That happened in the church under the watch of Eli. But I can tell you, I just know Pastor McGrath since last week Sunday night. But I sense a fire in my gut. He just needs somebody to just. A matter of fact, give me my word, sir. If they don't want to work with you, call me anytime. I will work with you. He's a good man. I sense it. Amen. He's a good man. And sometimes you go and mash your can too. But he's still a good man. Sometimes we have to get to good tough love. Hello, church. Love you can done, but sometimes you get out and have to drop two lick under your shirt. Hello. I know you hate me here too. But I correct you. And so we can't take correction. Even the wise man take it correction. Am I talking truth? If you work with him, this place jump pack. I, so I promise that men are coming. More men coming. Uh, whether you bless me or not, me we come and help you. Amen. I'm going to ask one of my friends to come. Uh, that good evangelist lady, evangelist Tamara Blake from the New Testament. Fire bomb that. God, this place can't hold her. You can check it on YouTube, Tamara Blake. Check my page. I have a matter of fact, she may make preach this morning for me. Tamara Blake. She must have done preach right now. Listen, God has some people in Zion. But them sit down upon them talent. Stir me up, God. Stir me up. Stir me up again. 
Lord, I want to be awakened. I want to be on a move for God. Hallelujah. Can God find somebody who will walk out from the crowd? And I need some people today to step out from where you are and say, Pastor Stedman, I join with Pastor Morgan to keep the flame. What is the, what is the church name? And when you step out, you step out. Me now point at nobody. All those who stand in solidarity, in unity and oneness with this man of God. Walk out yourself. Me now call on you, me now. For God's sake, if you don't mean it, nobody come. If you go and sit on the job, no come. If you go and play at church, no come. If you go and misbehave, no come. God need solid, grounded, balanced, mature, growing believers to stand up. This is a lighthouse in this area. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see white people and Chinese come to this place. Indian going to come. God going to sense that go get refilled. Go get reawakened. Go get back your fire. Go get back your touch. Healing and miracles. Signs and wonders must take place in this house of God. I believe God. For blind eyes to open. The dead to rise from the dead. Crippled to leave for joy. The dumb speak. The deaf hear. For we are in the days of the Holy Ghost. But as long as the light is out. People will avoid this church like the plague. How much do you love God? Love your church and love your pastor. Me have to defend him. You know? Hello. Me say me have to defend him. No matter what, we stand together. Amen. Say, if you're cursing, you're cursing me too. Amen. Hello, church. Amen. You know, ask me if you do this. And I'm driving me come today, so I'm never no discussion. And my brother, what's the name of my brother? Brooks. Brother Brooks, man. Husband of Sister Brooks. No, 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 no. Oh, 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 in the family. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Brethren, I need to hold hands together. Hold hands together. Somebody, everybody hold somebody. United wisdom. No pastor. You, you come up here, sir, sir. Hold hand with your father. Hallelujah. A matter of fact, all right, thank you, Jesus. All the ministers, they want ministers join together. Ministers. Where are, where are the ministers? Put up your hand, ministers. Deacon, evangelist. Elder, missionary. All the ministers come up here, sir. Officers. Let the people know who they are working with. When they see you out there, sir. One day in St. Elizabeth, I call all my workers. I said, I want you to tell me what the Bible means to you. What does the call of God mean to you? What does the anointing mean to you? Where do you want to take this church? What is God saying through you? Hallelujah. Never look at this church the same way as from today. Don't take God for granted. Don't take God's servant who pray for you and labor before God on your behalf. God said the light went out in the house of God who will bring back the light who will, who will go against the voice of the naysayers go against the words of those who will speak down to you and say position your look a friendship your look where you go like lamb tell them I've heard the voice of Jesus I heard the Holy Ghost speak 
looking on the inside that the light must come back who will bring the fuel who will bring the light who will clean this shade the drunkard can't do it the politician can't do it he need the holy brethren I want you down there to pray for everyone up here call their names before God start praying we're not going to sing it out give yourself to God Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true and those up here pray Lord take me higher Lord reveal yourself to me another visitation God Lord come down on the mountain top speak to me God show up God in my life in my ministry you call me from my mother's womb you ordain my steps for the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord God, my life is in your hand. My future is in your hand. Oh God, my gifts and calling and ministry is in your hand. Divine God, I surrender all. I give you everything. I hold back nothing. God, I, I make myself the sacrifice. You are the fire. Oh God, burn, burn, burn on the altar of sacrifice today. God, I need you to reign. I need you to reign. Lord, touch your servants in the name of Jesus. Is your olive oil? Father, anoint your servants one more time with anointing oil of God. Fresh anointing. Oh God, touch your Fresh Jesus anointing. God. Hey, in the name of Fresh Jesus. anointing. Oh, for the task ahead. Thank you, the task is great. Even in old age, it shall still bring forth fruit. Oh God, let your hand be upon them. Carry them out further. Carry them deeper. Oh God, deep, call it unto deep. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. I give them to you. I give this church to be a catalyst. This church, oh God, it only take a spark to get the fire going. Oh God, light up their life. Light up their 